Hey guys, so this is your video on how to do use substitution. Um, so this is arguably the hardest form of integration that you will be doing in Calc AB. Um, there are other forms for that you'll learn in Calc BC if you go on, um, but this is the hard one for Calc AB. So our goals for today is to be able to use this U substitution to find an indefinite integral, and then the second half will be to evaluate definite integrals. Okay, and our learning target for English development is to be able to correctly use the terms definite versus indefinite integral, constant of integration, derivative, and substitute when explaining or justifying my responses. Um, you won't really be doing that with each other since this is just a video, but practice saying it in your head at least. Okay, so just a little bit of background and preview info. So if I gave you the function y equals 3x squared and I said what is dy dx, well all that's asking you to do is to take the derivative. So what is the derivative of 3x squared? It's going to be 6x. Okay, but remember that dy dx is just really the same thing as a change in y over a change in x, where your change in x is getting really, really small, really, really close to zero. But in theory, these are both just numbers. So if I asked you what does dy equal, well, I could just multiply both sides by dx, and I'd end up with dy is equal to 6x dx. And this is what's known as a differential equation, and we're going to be seeing more of these later, but you kind of need this idea of a piece of a derivative being equal to something with the other piece of the derivative. Okay, so our goal for this lesson is to be able to take an indefinite integral, again indefinite, there are no boundaries, such as 8x e to the 4x squared times secant squared of e to the 4x squared dx, and find the antiderivative of it, evaluate it, okay? And so that integral looks really, really scary and unlike anything we've seen so far. And we're like, wait, I don't know how to do this. Okay, but if I asked you to take the derivative of tangent of e to the 4x squared, you'd be like, okay, I know that I need to use chain rule. So I'm going to start on the outside. So what is the derivative of tangent? It's going to be secant squared, and then you just keep the inside the same, so you bring the e to the 4x squared down. Okay, chain rule says that then we're going to take the derivative of that inside. Well, the derivative of e is just e, so times e to the 4x squared, but we're not done yet because we have that last integral in the x, or sorry, last function in a function in the exponent, that 4x squared. So I have to take the derivative of 4x squared and that gives me 8x. And now if I look, I can see, oh, I have a secant squared of e to the 4x squared. And then the chain rule produced those extra outside functions. So now if I asked you to evaluate this, because you know that taking the derivative of this gives you this, this is simply telling you to take the antiderivative, and the antiderivative of this must take you back to tangent of e to the 4x squared, okay, plus c. Don't forget the plus c. Anytime you're doing an indefinite integral, you have to have that plus c there, okay. And so our goal for today is to be able to figure out, okay, if I wasn't given this function to take the derivative of, if I was just given this integral, how would I be able to figure out what it should be, okay? So keeping in mind that u substitution is all about just the chain rule of derivatives in reverse, sometimes it's going to be easy to find the antiderivatives of a function that involve chain rule. So for instance, if I ask you to take the integral of 2 sine of 2x dx, I'm going to look at this and be like, okay, when I take the derivative of 2x, that's going to give me that constant of 2 out front. So all I really need to do is what is the antiderivative of sine? Well, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of 2x, and then plus c. Remember that you can always work the other direction, you can take the derivative of this to see if it 
gives you what's inside the integral. So what's the derivative of negative cosine? It would be positive sine of 2x times 2, because that's the derivative of the inside. Okay, so then what if I asked you to do the integral of e to the 4x dx? Well, I know that the antiderivative of e to the 4x is just e to the 4x, but, okay, because I have that constant, um, that value in the exponent 4, I'm going to have to multiply by 1 fourth to cancel it out, right? If, I, if you were taking the derivative of e to the 4x, it would give you 4e to the 4x. To cancel that 4 out front, you'd have to have the 1 fourth. Okay, last but not least, if I asked you to do the integral of x plus 1 to the 7th, it's just your power rule in a reverse. So that power of 7 becomes a power of 8. And to undo, you then have to have that 1 8th out front. Because the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, you don't have to worry about anything else. It's going to just stay as is. So again, these are your easy examples. Um, where you should, in theory, just be able to look at it and see the chain rule in reverse. So go ahead and turn the page, pause the video, and try the three do I get it now. Okay, so we have the integral of cosine of 4x dx. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, so that's sine of 4x. To undo that coefficient of 4 on the inside, I have to multiply by 1 fourth. Don't forget that you need that plus c at the end. Okay, if I have the integral of 3e to the 2x, the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so e to the 2x, okay? I'll leave the 3 out front, okay? But when I do the antiderivative of e to the 2x, I know that I need to have that factor of 1 half to cancel that coefficient of 2. So my final answer is 3 halves e to the 2x plus c. Last but not least, if I have the integral of x plus 4 to the 5th dx, it becomes 1 6x x plus 4 to the 6th power plus c. The 5 increases by 1 to a 6, and then you have the 1 6th out front to cancel it. Okay, but do we need what's on the inside to have a derivative of 1? Okay, so we saw that the antiderivative of x plus 1 to the 7th was 1 8th x plus 1 to the 8th plus c. And we saw that the antiderivative of x plus 4 to the 5th was 1 6th x plus 4 to the sixth. Pause the video here and see if you can figure out what the antiderivatives for these functions would be. Keeping in mind the only thing I changed from the left to the right is instead of being x it's now 2x, instead of being x it's now 3x. So pause the video, see if you can figure those two out. Okay, so the key here is that now instead of having a derivative on the inside of 1, we have a derivative of 2. So when I go to use my reverse power rule, 2x plus 1 to the 8th, I need that times 1 8th to cancel the power of 8, but I also need times 1 half to cancel the derivative of 2. So my final answer would be 1 16th times 2x plus 1 to the 8th, plus c. Likewise, when I do the antiderivative here, I increase the power by 1, so 3x plus 4 to the 6th power. I need to multiply by 1 6 to undo that power of 6 when I take the derivative, and I need to multiply by 1 3rd to undo the 3 from when I take the derivative of the inside. So it's 1 over 18 times 3x plus 4 to the 6th power plus c. 
pause the video now, think about that a little bit more if it doesn't quite make sense, and if you have any questions, write them in words to the side so that we can answer it at a later live so you don't forget about it. Okay, so at this point you're probably thinking, Miss, you said we were going to be learning U substitution, and at no point have we done anything that involves a U. So U substitution is generally used for reverse chain rule when it's not quite as obvious um, what should be done. In other words, your derivative's not just some sort of constant for the inside, it's some sort of other function of x. So, for instance, if I want to integrate 2x times x squared plus 5 cubed, dx. Okay, so these are a product. If I was taking the derivative, I'd have to use the product rule. We don't really know a way to anti-derive the product rule. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to choose a u. We're going to say that u equals something, some part of this integral we're going to set equal to u. And your hint is since it's reverse chain rule, the u is normally or often on the inside. So when I look at this, right, I have a function of 2x, I have a function of x squared plus 5, and then I have a function of that being cubed. But I ask myself, what is the function inside of a function? And the answer is that it is x squared plus 5. x squared plus 5 is inside of that cubed function. So I'm going to say let u equal x squared plus 5. Okay, so then we're going to take the derivative of your u with respect to x, since that's your constant of integration. So du dx is equal to 2x. Okay, but we don't really want it in this form, so we're going to write it as du is equal to 2x dx. And you probably want to try and get used to, and from here on out in the video, I'm going to skip straight from here to this du equals. So I'm going to turn u into du. I'm going to take the derivative of x squared plus 5, it's 2x, and then multiply by dx. Okay, so how will you know if you chose the correct u? You'll know you chose the correct u if what's left outside is what your derivative of u was. So notice that I highlighted x squared plus 5 on the inside. So what was not included? 2x and dx. When I took the derivative of u, what did I get? 2x and dx. So if I think of this integral, and again, multiplication is commutative, you can switch the order, as instead being x squared plus 5 cubed times 2x dx. Well, I defined u as being x squared plus 5. So I can replace x squared plus 5 with u. So this becomes the integral of u cubed. And I said that 2x dx is equal to du. So now I'm just being asked to take the inner or find the antiderivative of u cubed du. And we know that that's just reverse power rule. So we took the derivative of u, we rewrote the integral, and now we're ready to integrate. So to integrate u cubed, I would just do u to the fourth power times one fourth, and then don't forget about the plus c. Okay, your final step, right, is your original expression was in terms of x. So I need my final antiderivative to be in terms of x. So we need to substitute our u back in. So this becomes 1 fourth times, what was u? It was x squared plus 5. So 1 fourth times x squared plus 5 to the fourth power plus c. That's my final answer. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, make sure you understood all the steps, rewatch it if you need to before we go on to the next example.
Okay, so what if instead I gave you the integral of sine of 3x plus 2 dx? Okay, so here the inside is 3x plus 2. So I'm going to say that u is equal to 3x plus 2. I'm going to take the derivative of my u. So du is equal to, well, the derivative of 3x plus 2 is just 3 dx. And I'm going to say, well, I have a dx, but I don't have a 3. So how is this helpful? Well, remember, this is just algebraic manipulation. I could say that 1 third du is equal to dx. Simply divide both sides by 3. So du over 3 is equal to dx. Now when I go to rewrite my integral, right, sine of 3x plus 2 becomes sine of u. And dx becomes 1 third du. 1 third is just a constant, so it can move to the front. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Okay, negative cosine u plus c. Okay, if you distribute the 1 third, 1 third times a constant is just a different constant. So this is negative 1 third cosine. Okay, we don't want it in terms of u, we want it in terms of x. So cosine of 3x plus 2 plus c. So could you have done that just using the process that we used earlier for chain rule in reverse, where we multiplied by power, the inverse of the powers and the inverse of the derivatives? Sure, but if you didn't quite understand those examples before, this is proof that u substitution will work for you. Okay, so then two things. One, uh, it got copied wrong when I created the notes, so go ahead and white it out, cross it out, change it to the integral of x square root of x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, and then I actually forgot a second example, which is the integral of e to the square root of x over the square root of x dx. So add that to the side as well. Okay, so for this one, again, we want the function inside of the function. So I'm going to say that u is equal to x squared plus 1. So that means that du is equal to 2x dx. The derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 1 is 0, and then I have my dx. Okay, so I notice that I have an x and I have a dx, but I don't have a 2. So I'm going to move the 2 to the other side and say 1 half du is equal to x dx. So now when I go to evaluate this, the integral of the square root of u times 1 half du. So this is the integral of 1 half u to the 1 half du. Power, reverse power rule applies, so this is u to the 3 halves. You're adding 1, 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. Okay, then you have to multiply by the reciprocal, so multiplying by 2 thirds. Okay, and then plus c. Finally, I substitute in for my u. I simplify the 2's cancels. So I have 1 third x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so what if instead I had the integral of e to the square root of x over the square root of x dx? Okay, again, I want a function inside of a function. So is a reciprocal or a fraction a function? I guess it could be, but I'm going to actually choose to make the exponent of e my my function, my u value. So I'm going to say that u is equal to the square root of x. So now du is equal to 1 over 2 square root x dx. Hopefully that's a, a derivative that you still have memorized and can quickly do from our timed derivative tests. Okay, but I don't have a 2 here, so I'm going to say that 2 du is 1 over square root of x dx. 
Okay, remember that you could think of this as being the square root of e to the square root of x times 1 over the square root of x dx. Sorry about that. Hopefully it stayed. Um, okay, so you can think of it like this. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of e to the u times, okay, we have 1 over square root of x dx, which is here, 2 du. Well, what's the antiderivative of 2 e to the u? It's just 2 e to the u plus c. Last step is simply to plug in your u, so 2 e to the square root of x plus c. Okay, pause the video, look back through those three, and write down any questions that you have. Okay, so what if you're if you're presented with something like this, where it's the square root of 5x, the integral of 5x squared over 4x cubed minus 1 dx. Well, at that point, your u isn't really a function inside of a function. We have a function in the numerator. We have a function in the denominator. Okay. Um, in this case, it will often be the denominator. Okay, so real quickly, I'm going to go back, right, to where we have the hint. Since it's reverse chain rule, the u is normally on the inside or in the denominator. However, what else has an, a derivative that involves denominators? Well, if I think about the derivative of sine inverse, it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. If I think about the derivative of tangent inverse, it's 1 over 1 plus x squared. So just be careful that it's not inverse trig. Basically, you just need to be able to recognize those derivatives of inverse trigs. Okay. So if my u is not a function inside of a function, it will be whatever function is in the denominator. Okay, so for example, I have the integral of 5x squared over 4x cubed minus 1 dx. I'm going to say, okay, what's in the denominator? 4x cubed minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to say that u is equal to 4x cubed minus 1. I'm going to take the derivative du is equal to 12x d 12x squared, excuse me, 12x squared dx. So I notice that I have an x squared dx, which I have here. Okay, but here I have a 5 and here I have a 12. So two things are going to happen. First off, I'm going to move the 5 out to the front of the integral. I'm not going to have it on the inside. It's just going to be a constant. Move it to the front. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this as x squared dx is equal to 1 12th du. So two things happened. I moved that coefficient of 5 out to the front since it's a constant. I moved this coefficient of 12 to the other side since I don't have it here. Okay, so now I'm ready to rewrite my integral. I have 5 times the integral, okay? So if I take this x squared over dx, remember this is actually 1 over 4x cubed minus 1 times x squared dx. So this becomes 1 over u. And x squared dx becomes 1 twelfth du. Okay, again, 1 twelfth is a constant, so I'm going to move it to the front. So this is 5 twelfths integral 1 over u du. What is the antiderivative of 1 over u? It's one you should have memorized. So it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. 
final step, plug in your u, so 5 over 12, natural log of the absolute value of 4x cubed minus 1 plus c. Okay, so what if instead I have the integral of e to the x divided by e to the x plus 4? Okay, so same thing, we're going to set our u to be the function in the denominator. So u is equal to e to the x plus 4. Then we're going to take the derivative of u. du is equal to e to the x dx. Notice that again, that's conveniently my numerator. Rewrite my integral. This is the integral of 1 over u du, I didn't need to do anything with constants, so the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Final step, plug in my u, so this is the natural log of the absolute value of e to the x plus 4 plus c. Do I really need the absolute value bars here for this particular problem? No, e to the x plus 4 is always positive, so you can just as easily write it as the natural log of e to the x plus 4 with no absolute value bars, but still both parts inside the natural logarithm, plus c. Again, it's, it's not necessary to rewrite it that way, but it is important to recognize that if it were a multiple choice question, that these two are equivalent. Okay, so at this point you need to write down any questions you have for those two examples. And then once you're ready, pause the video and go ahead and try the two do I get it. Okay, I'm not going to go through these step by step, but for this one, you should have chosen your u as being x cubed. So you were simply taking the antiderivative of e to the u du. Once you plugged your u back in, your final answer is e to the x cubed plus c. So if you didn't get this as your final answer, pause, go back, check your work. Did you choose the correct u? Did you simplify it correctly? Did you take the antiderivative correctly? Okay, and so for this one, I would have set u equal to x to the fourth minus one, that denominator. So you were just taking the integral of one over u du. So your final answer is the natural log of the absolute value of x to the fourth minus one plus c. And here you do need the absolute value bars because x to the fourth minus one can be negative. Rarely, only between 0 and 1, or negative 1 and positive 1, um, but it can be negative, so those absolute value bars are necessary. Same thing, if you didn't get that as your final answer, pause, go back and check, did you choose u correctly? Did you rewrite your integral correctly? Did you do your antiderivative correctly? Okay, so your, the last type that we're going to do all together in this lesson is U substitution with algebraic manipulation. It's very rarely seen on the AP Calc AB, but it is an important concept. So what if I have something like the integral of x times the square root of 4 plus x dx? I'm going to go with that same process that we used to start with. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to let my u equal whatever's inside the function, so 4 plus x. And then I'm going to say, okay, that means that du is equal to, well, wait, the derivative of x is just 1, so du is just dx. So I'm like, great, I can come over here and I can rewrite this, but I don't have anything to do with the x. This becomes the square root of u, and dx becomes du. I don't know how to do that because it has both u's and x's. I need everything in terms of u. So how could we write x in terms of u? Well, the key is what we defined as u. If u is equal to 4 plus x, then 
x is equal to u minus 4. We're simply subtracting 4 from both sides. So now I can rewrite this as the integral of u minus 4 square root u du. I remember we're always trying to find ways to make our life easier and the easiest thing to do the antiderivative is a po reverse power rule. So this is u to the first power. This is u to the one half power. If you distribute that square root of u in, you would have u to the three halves minus four u to the one half du. Okay, so the antiderivative of u to the three halves, we add one, so that's u to the five halves. We multiply by the reciprocal, two fifths. Okay, minus four. Okay, we add one, that becomes u to the three halves. We multiply by the reciprocal, two thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna simplify and I'm gonna substitute uh, four plus x for u. So this is two fifths, four plus x to the five halves, minus, 8 thirds, 4 plus x to the 3 halves, plus c. Okay, so you go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the next one. Okay, so you should have set u equal to x plus 3, which means du is equal to dx. And you also needed to make sure you had u minus 3 is equal to x, or x equals u minus 3. If you didn't use those three things, pause the video now, correct your work, try again. Okay, using these to rewrite, this becomes the integral of x plus 3, sorry, oh my gosh, I'm losing it, it's really late at night, uh, the integral of u minus 3, square root of u, du, if that was not what you were taking the antiderivative of, pause the video, try again. Okay, so it's u to the 3 halves minus 3u to the 1 half du, which gives us 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus 2u to the 3 halves plus c. So our final answer would be 2 fifths x plus 3 to the 5 halves minus 2 x plus 3 to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, so what is your homework for this lesson? You are going to be doing these five problems. You can go ahead and label them. Um, A through E. And remember, I did link a PDF, so even if you didn't print it out, it's still there. You can go write it down, even though I'm not showing it necessarily in the video. So you're doing these five problems. Okay, for extra practice two, you're doing A through D. You don't need to do E or F. You're welcome to try them if you want. They do require um, some trig identities and manipulation. Okay, and again, the challenge is optional. You're welcome to try and challenge yourself, but it's not required. I do recommend that you look at this back. You should already have these memorized. Please, dear God, have these memorized. Okay, and then what does it mean to find each of the following by being quote unquote clever? Well, I can rewrite the integral of tangent x dx as the integral of sine x over cosine x dx. Using what we just did, I probably want to set the denominator equal to u 
So u is equal to cosine x, which means du is equal to negative sine x dx. Oh, look, sine x dx. Negative du is equal to sine x dx. Okay, so from there I have the integral of negative 1 over u du. So that's the negative natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine x plus c. So you're rewriting those trig functions in terms of like sine or cosine and trying to find a way to use u substitution or a different algebraic method to find those answers, okay? Um, those I'm sure you can look and just Google online to find out if you're correct. So remember that to get credit for this assignment, you do need to upload your notes. The notes should be complete for everything that I did, but then you also need to do those extra practice one and extra practice two A through D before you upload your pictures. Other than that, make sure you have your questions written so that we can answer it during a live. Have a great day, afternoon, evening, or midnight, whenever you happen to be watching this.